Today's episode of Glenn's Retro Show is brought to you by DNA Dimension Designs, the best custom retro gaming decals in the game, period. Also now available, Glenn's Retro Wear, t-shirts, jackets, mugs, carrying bags, and lots of other items. Show your support for Glenn's Retro Show and wear something with style. Hey Cole, check this out. This new company called Arcade 1UP, mm -hmm. they're building these little arcade machines for about $299. Uh -huh. And they're really cool. They got Asteroids, Tempest, and Centipede. They're some of those great games. Missile Command? Uh -huh. I'm gonna call them and see if I can get a sample of this to review on my show. Cool. Alright, you stay here. I'm gonna go and call them. Okay. Okay. Hi, Arcade One Up. Yes, this is Arcade One Up. Uh, yes, this is Glenn from Glenn's Retro Show on YouTube. Oh, you're that really angry guy? No, Glenn, Glenn's Retro Show. Oh, you're that really irate guy. <laughs> no, no, I'm not the guy who yells at, uh, at the video games. No, that's not me. Are you sure you're not that angry or irate guy? No, no, I'm not the other guy who yells at video games. No, no, that's, that's not me. My show is I review classic game consoles and arcade machines. And I would love to have one of your consoles so I can review it on my show. I don't know. You sure you're not that angry guy or that I really irate guy? No, no, I, no, I'm not the guy who yells at the games. That's a shame, because those guys are really important on YouTube. Hey, my show is too important. Uh-huh. It is important, right, Cole? It is important! My show is important! <laughs> Flo, Flo, my show is important! My show is important! It's important! My show is important! Hello? Hello, is anyone there? Hi, um, how much are the machines? They retail for $2.99. Oh, that's not that bad. We think it's a great value. Okay, I'll take them. Great, I'll just need your YouTube account card. Okay. Okay, sir, what is your YouTube account card number? 7B843. Okay, we'll begin processing the card. Okay, thank you. Have a great day, sir. Bye. Um, Dad? What? They said that they were going to send you a couple of machines. They did? Yeah. See, I told you my show was important! <gasps> You're not even going to thank me?!
others are still inside. Save them. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me on today's edition of Glenn's Retro Show. What are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about some arcade one up. Now you must have heard about them at this point if you're a retro gamer or a gamer in general. Uh, arcade one up is trying to bring the arcade experience home with arcade machines that are a little bit more affordable and easier to maintain in today's world. Now arcade one up was kind enough to send me some review units uh, which we'll go into in a little bit. And Look at this, Lucille. It looks like Glenn moved his studio. Looks pretty nice. But did I hear you correctly? Did I hear you say you were testing out a couple of arcade machines? Haven't I told you I'm sick and tired of these companies claiming to bring the arcades home to simply be NES on a chip? I've warned you enough. Lucille agrees. Now you're gonna pay. Wait, 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 Megan, wait. Arcade One Up systems actually are running real arcade ROMs, real licensed arcade ROMs. They're not NES on a chip. Really? Let me see. Sure. See for yourself. <sighs> Well, 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 what do we have here? Asteroids, Tempest, Major Havoc, and Little Lander? And these are not NES on a chip? They look pretty nice. I'll put you down for a second, Lucille. While I was sitting in this little chair, this one is a perfect size. Oh, I like that. This looks pretty nice. Oh! Whoa! That's a perfect height when you're sitting down in this chair, but I'm not used to it. That's why I got killed so quick. Let me take a look at this one. Oh, this little riser down here, this thing's a perfect height. The controls are right where I want them to be. Play me a little Tempest. I like this! Alright Glenn, 
You're telling me you did the arcade rounds? And I believe it. These are pretty nice. Come on, Lucille. Okay, so you can see Negan kind of liked them. And you know what? They are pretty nice. Now, they sent me uh, two asteroids. One was actually supposed to be a, a centipede. But by doing it this way, at least you can see the same console, how it's going to look in both heights, which is still, I think, important to people. Um, this one here is a standard uh, asteroids, which does include four games. And here's a small stool I just found lying around. And we'll show you that the height that they chose for both of these actually is very good. A lot of people are always uh, making some issues about the height of these units. And Arcade One Up was always standing by, listen, one unit is, is designed for being sat in front of, and one with a riser, the uh, control panel will be at the right height. And I'm going to tell you from experience I've had so far, I have to agree with them. This is a standard little stool. Now, if I sit on this stool right here and turn around, my hands are at the exact level I would want them to be to play the game. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Very comfortable to get to these controls. Now, the one foot riser here is an extra cost. Uh, if you buy it from Best Buy and uh, I think uh, Home Depot, uh, that's a little bit more money. They have a 12 in one machine that comes with the riser already. Now, I bought the riser from uh, Walmart for $44. And I got to admit, that's a nice, solid riser. It's not cheap. Uh, it's very solid, easy to hold the weight. And it raises this machine up by one foot. And standing next to it again, if you can see, my hands are perfect. Now I'm five foot, eight inches tall. Okay, I'm not a six foot tall guy, so it might be a little bit uh, short for them. But for me at five foot eight, this is absolutely a perfect, perfect height. Now, another concern that people had about these units was they felt that it was going to be cheap quality, that the uh, machine's going to hold up uh, over time. Now, I will say that um, the sides and the units, to me, feel very solid. It looks like it's very well built, and these were actually shipped assembled. I had hoped they were coming uh, in the, the standard packaging so I can go through the whole build process and see how that went. But they determined, I guess, for the viewers, some people may not have that ability. So they sent these units pre-built and they came undamaged. Um, the artwork also, I'm going to say, looks really, really nice. Um, now, there is an issue that's been going on for some time about the control panels. Now, let me just stop for one second here. The uh, artwork up here and on the sides are like a vinyl decal, so there's no issues with these at all. These will hold up just fine. And again, the, uh, the wood itself is very solid. The machine feels very solid. Now, they're about 60 pounds a piece, which is good because if you want to move it from room to room or spot to spot, you can do it yourself. My Zaxxon unit... That's over 450 pounds. And that unit, you need multiple people to move it. And it, it's, it's solid but overly so for home use. If you're using it in an arcade, I understand it, but for the home, this is more than adequate. Now, people are concerned about it, it's gonna last a long time. So I also have a Pro Play Home Arcade. And that machine was designed for the home for your NES. That machine I purchased in 1990. It is now 2018. That machine and the wood and everything is still fine. The controls work just great. So I don't have a concern about the build quality. I mean, it's a really nice job. The artwork here, again, is nice. But the issue has been these control panels. And Arcade 1UP is addressing it. The problem is, apparently, the oils from our hands react with the paint they use here on the control panels. And it starts to peel off and come off. So Arcade 1UP is actually sending out a uh, little plastic uh, overlays to go over here that will protect the artwork. Now I don't know in the future if they're going to change the screening method they use on here, but for the initial units you simply call their toll-free support number and they will send you an overlay uh, that will protect the uh, artwork. The machines themselves uh, play very well. Now, I'm going to go in other videos more in depth into the gameplay of the units. This is just a basic overview of the machine itself and to talk a little bit about it versus arcade machines and other things that, that I have. Um, the big thing, again, was the height. I, I, again, am very happy with the height. I'm also very happy with how they look. I think that the Asteroids uh, or the uh, Centipede machine, which is the other one that they had, 
uh, look very well. Um, the Street Fighter, a lot of people have gotten that one, we're very happy with the artwork. Now, another people, uh, thing people talk about is the, uh, the controls themselves. Now, I don't have a joystick on either of these units. Uh, these are asteroids, they never had joysticks, they only had the buttons. Now, my, uh, my Zaxxon is from 1982, and in those days, they used what's called a leaf switch. A micro switch. A leaf switch is basically two pieces of metal not touching each other and this, you press down and they touch. I've always preferred that myself because I've always felt in rapid rapid pressing the button for firing or, or something along those lines. It didn't make a lot of noise and it was very very springy and reactive. But the arcades changed and they felt, and they're probably right, that that wore out faster. It didn't last as long. And I do remember in the arcades uh, the people constantly working on the leaf switches. Uh, they didn't last, but I always felt they were more responsive. So in today's world, and even uh, in the mid '80s, they switched over to micro switches. My Pro Play Arcade has it, and these have it. Now I will say the switches themselves, they react. They do what's supposed to do. Now a lot of people say, well, it's, it's not a you know high quality switch. Again, this is for the home. It's not designed for an arcade. And from the time I've had with it so far, there's nothing wrong with these buttons. But it's a standard size. So if you did want to put in a higher quality switch or a luminate switch that people have done, you absolutely can do this. These are pretty cherry for modifications if you wanted to do so. But again, I've had no problem with these switches whatsoever. Now the machines themselves run out of 12 volt battery, uh, 12 volt AC adapter, sorry, that plugs in uh, to the back of the unit. And you have your master on-off switch here. I'm gonna turn this one off right now, this is still running. And you'll see when I turn it on, how quick it takes to boot up. That's it. Now the speaker for the unit is mono, and it is right over here. And there are three volume settings, off, medium, it's currently set to high. That's where it's running at right now. The screens themselves are a 17 inch LCD. Uh, CRTs are really not viable in today's market. It would cost too much actually now to get a CRT, the weight and the risk of burning in. So they went with LCD panels. And to be honest, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, again, these are very good quality arcade recreations. And it's not gonna be arcade perfect because these are not designed truly to be a real arcade machine. It's an homage to them that you can take and play at your house. And the screens themselves are very vibrant, very bright. The colors come off very well. Now, these particular machines are vector graphic games. It's not like Street Fighter where it's, where it's a raster type of graphic. So uh, it does a very good job of simulating that uh, on here. Now, ETA Prime did a complete breakdown of this, so I'm not going to go in depth like I was going to do because ETA Prime has already done it. So if you want to find out more about the guts and the displays and even how to turn it into Raspberry Pi, he beat me on that too, and that's okay. He's already done the video. I have a link down below to go over to ETA Prime and uh, look at his review of the, the unit and the, uh, the hardware that's inside here. Um, what I just really want to talk about was the units themselves. I felt that the height was is fine i feel that the artwork looks great the side decals everything here is really nice now there are some things i would like to have seen different uh, one thing i would have liked to have seen is this to have been plexiglass and um made this illuminated i think that would add a really nice arcade touch to it and what i was talking about before the overlay it's actually going to be a plexiglass overlay i meant i just couldn't think of the word before so they're sending out plexiglass overlays now the reason I wanted the Asteroids and the Centipede, and not the like Street Fighter or the Rampage units, was I really wanted to know how the special controls worked on them. Now, the Asteroids does use buttons, but it's also placed Tempest. And Tempest comes with this little spinner wheel right here. And the Centipede comes with a trackball. Unfortunately, I can't talk about Centipede yet because it hasn't arrived. Um, I will say that the Arcade one have also touted uh, the controls to being arcade controls or arcade accurate controls. Now, I'm going to take that as they wanted the layouts and, and, the, and the way it looks to be arcade accurate. The buttons 
and the, the rotary dial, I can say for sure, are definitely not from the arcade. The buttons are a lot closer to it. Out of the box, the uh, paddle wheel here for Tempest, when it comes out of the box, at least on my unit and some other review units, uh, I'm going to say makes Tempest unplayable because it's, it's too tight. I can't even really turn this one much at all. Uh, I am going to do another video. There is a way to fix it. So don't let that stop you from buying it because it's definitely something that's fixable. Not only that, a friend of mine, Bruce Yeager, has already modified that with a uh, arcade spinner. So again, these machines are mod very modifiable. So uh, when I make the fix and repair on this, it'll make it usable and it'll be fine for most people. But if you want more of that arcade feel, Bruce Yeager will show you how you can actually make that into a spinner that spins like Tempest would have spun in the arcade. So some things I wish Arcade uh, 1UP would change is in future units is make these light up, uh, definitely fix the, uh, the control panel so the paint doesn't come off. And definitely, at least on the, uh, the Asteroid units, the Tempest wheel, either to factory make the adjustments I'm going to make uh, later on, or replace that with a higher quality spinner, or offer add-ons. I think that'd be a great thing for Arcade 1UP to say, okay, we, we made a light-up marquee, X amount of dollars, bam, put it in, you're going to have that light up. You want an arcade style spinner, X amount of dollars, bam, you can put it in. It'll drive up uh, sales for them, and it'll make the people who really want that extra in their machines and customize it a little bit more available to them. So, I'm going to get into a little gameplay right now, but again, I'm going to make more videos going into more details about this, but right now, since Negan's here, yeah, he's a little antsy, and I don't like getting hit with a bat too often. So, let's get a quick shot of some of the, some of the gameplay on these things, and I'll also um, do a little comparison between this and my other units I have already, my Arcade Zaxxon and my uh, Pro Play Home Arcade. But let's take a look at a little gameplay right now. Okay, so here is our layout for our, our machine. Again, this one is Asteroids. You can see we have uh, four games on here. We'll start off with the Asteroids. Now, to pick the initial game, you're going to press your A button here, and then it tells you basically the controls you need to play Asteroids. Uh, one or two players, rotate right, rotate left, hyperspace, thrust, and fire. And again, Asteroids is probably, next to Space Invaders, the second most favorite game that I played as a kid. Uh, Asteroids and, and Space Invaders took a lot of my money. So I'm very, very familiar with Asteroids. So I'm going to go into the game here and start it up. And you can see it boots right into the game. And again, it's a vector machine, vector graphics. It's a pretty good recreation uh, of vectors. Uh, again, you really need a special monitor to do it perfectly. But uh, it's a pretty good simulation of it. But again, this is the actual arcade ROM. This is not an NES clone or recreation. It's actually a true licensed arcade version of Asteroids. So let's start it up. Took a big hit. So the controls seem very responsive. Again, the buttons are clicky because at this day and age they use micro switches instead of leaf switches. But you'll definitely know when a, when a press happens. It does seem fairly responsive to me to my multiple quick rapid fire uh, shots. I'm just missing the asteroid, but that's okay. The sound effects are definitely accurate to the uh, arcade machine, which they should be, being it's the arcade ROM. Okay, so when you're ready to change a game, just hold down the uh, player one button for five seconds, 
and it takes you back to your main menu. Now again, to select other games here, you're gonna use your paddle wheel, but this one's very tight. I'm gonna try and turn it, see if I can get it to, to go. Move down to Tempest. Now, Tempest was designed for this guy right here to play with that spinner. Right now as it is, it's a little too tight for me to use, but you can simulate the left and right buttons here. So that's what we're gonna do, just load up Tempest. So we're gonna start it by pressing our A button right now, like so. Here's Tempest, we'll start it up. And we'll pick the first level. So we got a fire and our moving left and right. We can do with this. Of course, it's not the way the arcade was supposed to be played. But most home consoles, except the Atari Jaguar, uh, would have that you can modify your, your stick to play it. It's still not too bad. This guy's just it's just too stiff. I can't really turn it that way. So we're gonna come back on a future video after I modify this, show you how Tempest plays. And again, I'll link to uh, Bruce Yeager, who really did a nice modification to, to this paddle right here. Again, it is very fixable. Don't let that stop you from picking up the unit if you wanted to get it. We'll hold down the button for five seconds. Okay, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna fix this spinner so we can use Tempest to Major Havoc. Now the problem really is, it's too tight. If you look at the uh, the paddle right here, there's like a little hat at the very bottom, like a lip. And it's also on the side inside the wood of the cabinet. And it's basically compressed a little too much and putting pressure as you try and turn it on the wood. So what we need to do is simply make this raise up a little bit right here. And it's not very hard to do at all. Now I'm wearing gloves right here. I just don't want to take a chance of, of damaging any of the uh, the artwork on here, I'm waiting for my screen protector to show up, but by making sure no oils from my hands get on this, it should be fine. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna simply take out one, two, three, four screws right here, and you can see the panel flips right out. Now, of course, if you just got the machine uh, fresh in the box, you can try turning your, your panel and see if it's too tight, and before you put the machine together, you can start taking out these screws to get into the control panel. So you can see it's very easy to take out. It's only one cable holding it in. It's like a standard uh, IDE cable for your hard drives. Well, back in the day anyway. Now they're all SATA. But back in the day, they were these 40-pin or 80-pin uh, IDE cables. And uh, you can't get it uh, put in wrong as a notch. We just pull this thing right out. And you can see it comes right up. You see right here is a little notch on it. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit right here. No, a little too far. Bring it down. And you can see there's just a little notch right here. So you can't put it in wrong. It only goes in one way. So it's, that's not a problem taking it apart. So we're now going to take away the panel. And we need to take out a few screws right here. There's uh, three on each side to take off this plastic cover right here. And you can see the cover comes right off, exposing the device right here. This is our uh, potentiometer right here. Although this one's really, I don't know if it's technically a potentiometer because it actually has a uh, dedicated section. It's almost like a, just a switch, but I got a 360 uh, rotational switch. And here's the problem right here. Again, you can see it's like a, a hat. And this hat and the hat on the other side, what these screws put in here, is putting too much pressure on the wood, making it very hard to turn. So we need to simply make a little gap in here. So we need to take out two screws right here to take off the actual electronics for the spinner. So you just take out the one screw right here, and we're going to take out the other one as well. You can see this comes right off, and you can see it's really not a true potentiometer. It's really just a dial with 360, I guess, uh, positions uh, as you turn it, because it's actually notchy. Um, so in the future, I might make a modification to this to make it a true spinner. But then we need to simply take out these two screws to release the uh, actual spinner wheel. So it's very easy to do. Just put your Phillips head in there and take it out. And you can see here we have two separate devices here, but we need to prevent them from hugging this wood so tightly that it's very hard to turn. Now these washers are what I had lying around and they'll, they'll work, but they're not the ones you really want. And I'll show you why in a second. So you can see the, this is the bottom half, the part that's inside the arcade cabinet that attaches to the uh, little switch. And these are like little recessed holes. You want the washer to actually go inside 
here. You just want to raise this just enough so this is not touching the wood and compressing it. These are a little bit too big, but for my initial test, uh, it was fine. It just made sure that they weren't touching. But you want to make sure the washers themselves go inside these two plastic areas, not on top of them. Because you see when they're on top, they're adding just a little bit too much space. You want this washer to be inside these areas right here. If you go to Home Depot, bring this little uh, part of the spinner with you. Just find a little washer that'll sit right in there and you'll be good to go. You can see I have a little bit too much of a gap here, but it's done what I needed. It's just making sure that this, this cap here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here if I can. And move down a little bit. You can see I have, I have a gap right here. You don't need this big a gap. You just need it just away from the wood just a little bit. But again, for my tests, this was enough to me just to make sure that um, they were not touching and the wheel spun very, very freely compared to the way it was. You can see I have a large, those washers sitting on top made too large a gap. But um, again, for testing purposes, the spinner will, as you will see in a video, it made a big difference. Okay, everybody. So here we have my uh, Asteroids Tempest machine without the riser. And then we have the one here with the riser. The one with the riser, I've just done the modification with two small washers that probably, I think I spent, the guy gave it to me. <laughs> Actually, it was only like a couple of pennies. Guy goes just take them at, uh, at Home Depot. But here is the one, uh, the, the uh, pot that has not had the modification. And it's very hard to turn. Uh, you can see it, it does go but there's a lot of pressure on this and that's because the way this is designed it has like a little hat here and on the part underneath is also a hat so it's compressing on the wood and that's what's causing this really not to spin so well i mean you can spin it but it's it's you can see it's not easy my hands are going around very simply now here is the one where i put the two small washers in and you can see right here It spins freely. Now, it's not the same type of pot you would have gotten in the arcades where it's a true spinner. It's actually single, you can almost hear the clicks, which is actually still okay, but that's how it's registering. Each one becomes a register, each click is a register. But you can see here, this is working really well, where this one here, again, it's, it's really tight. I really can't get it to move too easy. But again, it's such an easy fix, it'll take you literally uh, two minutes to put the washer in. And I'm sure that Arcade 1UP will add uh, that fix to their production units as soon as they talk to the people uh, in manufacturing. But I'm going to show you some gameplay now with Tempest, as this spinner now is working just fine. So let's take a look at Tempest on the Arcade 1UP Asteroids machine. And uh, let's try Tempest now with this little fix in place. So we're going to start the game. We're going to press A to select it, and this here to initiate it. So here's Tempest. And we're going to start it. We'll pick a level. Very, very easy fix. Very easy fix. And now, Tempest here <laughs> plays really well. Now, you can't spin the wheel like you would have done in the arcade. But there's other modifications that I'll show you later on that let you do stuff like that. Bruce Yeager and a couple people already in the uh, arcade uh, official Arcade 1UP fan page have already created. But if you don't need to do that or want to do that, two small washers will get this working as intended. And then all your controls here are working absolutely perfectly. It really makes a huge, huge difference. Really a fun game. Tempest is an absolute classic, and it really has got to be played with a spinner. And this here is now working much better. Oh, but I still got killed. <laughs> You don't. <laughs> so you can see this thing is working very well. 
having no no issues with it going around the screen. Again, just two small screws and a few minutes of your time to simply put them in under the paddle. Oh, caught. And it is now working very well. Takes us back to our main menu. The next game here is Major Havoc. Now, I haven't really played much of Major Havoc. Uh, but we have to try and turn this down to get to it. There we go. We'll do the same thing here. We're going to press our, our, our sorry, A button here to get it. And we have jump, shoot, shield, moved left and right, and is also moved with the paddle. So I'm actually going to do this one in a future video to, to play it properly because, again, this guy is really stiff and I don't want to damage anything trying to do it. So we'll do a review of this one later. I'm going to go back to the main menu to another game I did play a lot as a kid and I found it to be a very fun game. And actually, I think I have to go. There we go. Is Lunar Lander. Now, Lunar Lander was a game where you basically take a lunar ship trying to land it on the moon. The one thing that's different here is Lunar Lander's throttle. Now, you did have the left and right to, to turn your ship, but it used to be a throttle that you had to use to engage your engine to counter thrust the gravity. I was kind of hoping they would have made this here that may have like an analog thrust to your, to, your, um, to your engine. They're using a button. And that's actually not horrible because every other emulator uh, that's been around uh, always used uh, this for your throttle. Actually, it's going to be this. This would be a thrust in a board. But it would have been nice if they had the option to use this as your analog thrust because the arcade machine did have that ability. But let's start it up and see how it goes. Okay, so Lunar Land here. Again, it looks just like the arcade machine because that's what it is. We'll put in our coin and start our game. And we have our abort and thrust. If we start again to continue. Here we go. So you see, I can turn my ship, and this is some engine thrust. I can do a little or a lot. Now in the arcade, you could have controlled that thrust with a throttle, and that would have been kind of nice, but again, it would have been another controller here. But this would have worked just as nice as a throttle. So I need to actually get over here to try and land into one of these markings here. And I might be too late already. Let's see if I can really get myself over there quick. And you have to watch your fuel level. You can see my fuel is going down low. And as you get closer to the ground, it's going to zoom in to give you a better idea of your surroundings. And you have your speed and your attitude over here. And there's no points to land there, so I'm not going to. It's not a fast-paced game, but it is a, a heart racer game, especially when you're coming down a little too fast or you can't get your angle right and you die. So I'm going to try and slow down. I might be going too fast. I don't know. I'm running low on fuel. And basically when you're out of fuel, that's when the game's going to end. Made a good landing, which was excellent. But it still plays very fine. And it's an enjoyable game, at least for me. I'm going to try one more here. Let's see if I can do this. There's a five-pointer right here. I'm going to try for it. Again, I want to stress again, the height is absolutely fine with the riser for standing. And uh, I'll do a video, maybe my next video with just sitting down. It was very comfortable sitting as well. I am coming out. I think I'm coming out way too fast. Yep. Well, I'm dead. But... That's okay. It happens. You can't win every every single time. But I think overall the quality of these machines are excellent. So this is just my initial video covering these units. I'll be doing more in the future. I literally just got these yesterday. And I want to just put a video out there to alleviate some concerns people may have had with the controls or the paint, the build quality. Uh, if I see these in the store, I pick it up. Um, I think that the height, both in the standard position for sitting down or with the riser standing up is fine. 
they look great. I mean, if you wanted to get your, some arcade machines at home, these are really neat to have lying around, powered up in your room. Uh, a few of them maybe uh, look really, really nice. Um, now, there are arcade purists that would be like, no, it's not a real machine. It's not meant to be. I mean, I do have a Zaxxon. Uh, not everyone wants to have a four or 500 pound arcade machine in the house. They want something they can sit down and play some games on. Let me live some memories. Uh, Street Fighter seems to be a big one. People want to get that at home and have the controls in it. Rampage is pretty good too. I'm old, old school. I like these old units. I would love to see them come out with maybe, you know, Berserk or Crazy Climber, Robotron, um, those, Scramble. Those are machines I love playing. Rally X, another one uh, I would love to see. They are coming out with other ones like Galaga, uh, Pac-Man. They have other machines coming down the pipe. So even if these aren't your tastes, they may have one coming out soon. So I would also uh, join me on my Facebook group, the official Arcade 1UP fan page, uh, where we discuss these and anything that has to be done to them, any modifications to make them better, or just change them to make them more uh, to your liking. Um, uh, initially, I have to say, I'm, I'm very impressed with the price point for what you're getting. For $299, this is what you're going to get right here. Uh, it's very solid. There are a couple of issues, but I will add one other thing. Arcade 1UP has been extremely responsive to any of these issues, any concerns. So don't let something hold you back because you think they're not going to fix something. They are listening to us, and that's more important than anything, that companies are listening to what we have to say and acting on it. So I do want to thank you for joining me today and um, please make sure you like and subscribe and also hit that notification bell. I always forget that part. Hit the notification bell so when I upload a new video, maybe it's an arcade one-up or something else, but you'll be notified. But I do thank you guys for joining me today. If you have any questions about these guys, please leave them down below. And if I can't answer that, I have uh, some good contacts over at Arcade One Up that maybe we'll be able to answer it for you. But definitely join us at the Arcade One Up fan page because Arcade One Up is actually there answering questions. So thanks everyone for joining me. Please uh, like and subscribe. Come back and join me for more videos on Arcade One Up. And remember everyone, like I'm going to do right now, game on. Hey, can I play? Arcade fan page. Remember, don't admire people too much. 
they'll disappoint you. Sit, blue, blue, sit. Good dog. <laughs> <laughs>